Hey, what's up, guys? It's Cookie Monster Zeta here, and today I'm going to show you how to install a bucket server and get it up and running and working. It's actually something real fun, and you can install different plugins. It's really fun if you can get it working. So uh, I recommend you follow the tutorial exactly how I do it. First, you want to start it by right-clicking on your desktop and creating a new folder. You can name this anything you want. I'm going to name mine MC Server. All right, so we got our folder. I'm just going to put it right there, just for a. Uh, Later references. Next, you want to go into your web browser. I'm using Google Chrome. Go to www.bucket.org. I'll have the link in the in the description below of uh, this whole respiratory of bucket.org. And basically, this is get, this gives you a bunch of uh, FAQs, problems and questions, updates, builds, uh, just the home page in general. It tells you what it is. Uh, so we got home, forums, team members, bug reports, documentation about us, get craft bucket and get plugins. Plugins will come into play later. I'll actually make a separate video on how to upload those and get them into your server, get them working, etc. Uh, forums is for at help. Uh, if you want to show off plugins, team members, bug reports, documentation about us, etc. So basically what you want to do to get the software is go to get craft bucket. It'll take you to a wiki page and it'll list three different operating systems. Windows, Linux and Mac OS X. So I have Windows, so I'm going to go ahead and under Windows, click the latest recommended build. This will pop up and go ahead and save it. Then it gives me this folder. So I want to copy this, go ahead and exit out of this, and this. So now we go back to our server folder that we created earlier, paste it in there. Now, uh, if the server has a 1 next to it, which probably won't because you guys have only been downloading in this uh, once you want to delete that but I downloaded it twice which is why it gave me that little one it won't work unless uh, you have it as default like it is now so now that you have that in there you want to go to your web browser and and click on the description below in the description below you will click on this link and it'll take you to a media fire download to download to the server starter this basically starts the server up and creates all the folders. So you'll click the download button and it'll give you a zip folder. You want to copy that folder, exit out of that, and go ahead and go back into your Minecraft server folder and paste that in there. Now you just extract it here and you can go ahead and delete the WinRAR folder. Okay, so it'll give you uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six server starters. Now, there's 64-bit and 32-bit. I don't think it matters if you choose A, B, C, D, or A and B. Uh, just you need to figure out which one you have, 32-bit or 64-bit. Now, if you do not know, you can go down to your Start menu, right-click on Computer, and then go to Properties. And this will pop up. And then, right here, it'll say your system type, 64-bit operating system. Yours might be different, but since I'm 64-bit, I'm going to go ahead and delete these 32-bits. Uh, I'll go with A, because it's shorter. Anyway, so we got our server starter and we got our craft bucket software. Now, you do not click on this craft bucket software, or else uh, your server won't start up, and you're gonna have to restart your computer because it'll give it'll give you a bunch of errors. So you do not click that until you've started the server. Actually, never click that. Just that's a non-clicking zone right there. So now that you have both of these, you want to start your server up. Should create a bunch of weird files, and it's gonna take a while to create the spawn area at first. But as you see here, it's creating a bunch of these different files. You got world, world, band IPs, band players, bucket, uh, the craft bucket software, ops, server, server log, server, and whitelist. As you see here, it's still starting up. There we go. So that's finished. Let's go ahead and close that out. So we got plugins now, and uh, I'll show that in a different video how to install and get plugins working. So now that we got all that done, you want to find out your server IP. And you can find that out by going down to the start menu and typing in CMD in the search bar. We'll get this little command prompt thing. This should pop up. Without uh, typing any spaces or typing anything, you want to type in IPCONFIG. IP config, no spaces, and then you want to go ahead and click enter. It'll give you this. Go all the way to the top. And where it says wireless LAN, adapter, wireless network connection, you'll get these um, five options. You'll get this, this, and this, and this. Uh, you want to look for the IPv4 address. In this case, mine is 192.168.1.7. What you want to do here is copy that into your server.properties file. That's a notepad that's called server. 
So you can just go ahead and open up your favorite text editor. I use Notepad just for the simple things, but you can also use Notepad++. Plus Plus. So uh, uh, go ahead and go to your server IP, and in front of the in front of the equal sign, no spaces, type in that IP address that you got from the IP config, and that should be the IPv4 address. Mine is 192.168.1.7. 1.7. So you've got your uh, IPv4 address copied into the server IP, and you can also change different things here, like spawn protection, whitelist, allow flight, and you want to keep the server port the same because that's going to come into play later. Level C PvP, I'm going to go ahead and change that to false, just for examples. Uh, spawn monsters false. Everything else is true. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. We're done, and. Uh, now that we have our server set, we gotta port we gotta forward the ports so that we and other people can connect to the server. So what we want to do is go back into our IP config uh, little command prompt folder thing and uh, you'll see default gateway. Now you want to memorize this number 192.168.1.1. It'll be different for you, but you want to take this default gateway number, go to your web browser and paste that into the search bar. No www and no dot com. So as you see there, already have it typed in and it'll give you this authentic authentication required might be a little bit different for you but uh, if you have a browser and I mean a, a router and you haven't changed the username or password yet the default username will be admin ad min and the password will be password everybody knows how to spell that uh, so you want to go ahead and log in if you if you do not know what this uh, what your username and password are then you might have changed them your router might have changed them uh, contact your la your router provider and see if they can recover it for you. I cannot help you there, so please no questions or comments below asking about that because I there's nothing I can do. I'm not in control about that. So go ahead and click login once you have your username and password in. Should take you to your Netgear or any other router that you have. I have Netgear, so on the sidebar or whatever wherever you can find this, look for port forwarding or port triggering. I'm gonna click on that. It'll take you here. Don't do anything. Just go to add a custom service. Doesn't matter what you name it. I'll name mine MC server. Okay. Okay. So leave this the same. TCP slash UDP. Doesn't matter. Starting port. You want to make it two five five six five because that's what it said in the Notepad document, as you see here. Server port. You want to leave all that the same. So don't mess with that. Two uh, five five six five. Link. Will, it'll be also in the description below. And server IP address in the IP config, the IP address is 192.168.1.7. So you want to make that a 7. And of course, I'll get a failure, but you'll get a success because uh, I already tried this with uh, another IP, so it won't let me make another one and another one and another one. So now that you have your ports forward, your files downloaded, everything's good. What you want to do is go into here and. Uh, you can change around everything. You got plugins, world, band IP, band players, bucket, the actual Java file. Do not double click that. Ops, server, server log, server, properties, the server starter, and whitelist. Now, if you're wondering how the heck are people going to connect to this, go ahead and close that uh, little IP config thing. Open up your Minecraft server, or your Minecraft uh, actual game. Log into it. Now, uh, to get the server going, you actually need to have the server starter server starter open the whole time. So you can't like open it and then close it. It has to be open the whole time while you're playing, or else you will not be able to connect to the server. Now, uh, if you're wondering how to connect to it, you can either use the IP the IPv4 address, which is 192.168.1.7 for me. It'll be different for everybody, uh, but that that can, that's what you can use to connect to it. Um, you can also use colon two five five six five to get a faster connection, but uh, people, the people that are connecting to it, the people that aren't the creators of it, uh, cannot use that IP address. So if you want a bunch of other people to connect to it, you need to get them your outside IP address. You can find that out by going to your web browser, typing in cmyip.com. I'll leave the link in the description below so you can check out your IP. See, this is mine. Anybody can connect to it. Uh, I, they cannot connect to my uh, IPv4 address. They have to connect to this one, or it will not work. So uh, I can either connect to my outside or my um, my IPv4. And I'm going to do the IPv4 just for demonstration purposes. Go ahead and pull, pull forward that. As you see here, my spawn is already.
went ahead and spawned. I have to wait for this to load. Of course, it's a bit laggy because I have a bunch of stuff open. Well, not not a bunch, but I'm recording at the same time, so give me a little slack here. Uh, but just wait for the world to generate a little bit, and that is your bucket server. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this helped. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comment box below. If you liked the video, if it helped you out and helped you get your server running, uh, please like the video and subscribe for more of these tutorials, guides, and let's plays of Minecraft, Call of Duty, etc. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know I for sure had trouble uh, getting my bucket server up at first, and I hope this helped you uh, and clear all the fog out of the way of uh, the complication of making this bucket server. So, hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any requests, comments, or questions, leave them in the comment section below. I will be uploading a video on how to install plugins and get them working on your server so that uh, they can make the server more enjoyable because without plugins it wouldn't be a bucket server you know might as well just download the default server from minecraft.net so anyways I hope you guys enjoyed please comment rate and subscribe I'll see you guys next time see you later